Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. So reading is winning and it's an educational revolution that we're going to be talking about this morning and some more. Joining us in studio is Dr. Clay to share with us what's going on with the Grapho game and so much more. Good morning, Dr. Hello. Clay. How are Good you? Good morning. I am well, thank you. And you, are you I'm, doing well today? I am well, thank you. Good. It's a pleasure to have you with us thank on you. the show. Now, before we get into Grapho and mm. the fantastic um, offering that it has, let's talk a little bit about you. Okay. And your experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I am a clinical and organizational psychologist. I was born and bred in mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much. I left at the age of 10 and every summer I was strongly encouraged to be here mm -hmm. <laughs> to reconnect with my culture. And basically from going to school here up to within, you know, elementary school and then going abroad, I was an individual that struggled mm -hmm. with learning. And so for me, when I came back after becoming a doctor, I came back in 2007 and my push was to make sure that we were connecting with individuals that were just like myself mm -hmm. as well as ensuring that we're raising awareness about mental health and pushing that through literacy. So that has been my biggest push so far. So even though mm -hmm. with some of the learning struggles that I may have had, four masters and a PhD later, it had nothing to do with my brain. It just mm -hmm. basically had to do that I learned differently. Differently, yes. definitely. And of course, this is something that we see not just with children, but with mm -hmm. adults as well. But let's go back to that, the relationship between liter literacy and mental health. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe it's significant to our society in Trinidad and Tobago? It's very significant within our society, mainly because many individuals who have a low literacy level, mm -hmm. actually there's a direct correlation to their mental health mm -hmm. and how poor it can be. Mainly because individuals with low literacy levels do not have the words or the language or the expressions. They're not able to verbalize right. how they're feeling, why it is they're feeling this way, or being able to access resources that I know many organizations within Trinidad and Tobago have mm -hmm. shared many resources for individuals for mental health, mainly during and post the pandemic, of yeah. course. Pre-pandemic, you know, within our culture, mental health has a stigma, you mm -hmm. know, so it's not, many individuals feel as though when they come to see me, that when they come to Higher Potential for Learning, that's the name of my practice, that they're coming because something is wrong with them, like yes. they're, you know, forgive me for using the word, but crazy, mm -hmm. basically, is what they would say. So our push is to ensure for individuals to be able to access that information, we need to know the signs. Can this person actually read? Yeah. Can this person actually verbalize? Do they even know what the coping strategies are if they're dealing with anything? Are parents aware of what to look out for if their child all of a sudden was happy one day? And then the next day, this child is now extremely sad, mm -hmm. does not want to go and take a shower, does not want to leave their room. You know, when a teacher sees a kid not sitting still, yes. or when a teacher sees a child flipping letters or things like that, do they know, are they aware this is a flag for a specific deficit or for sp specific learning disability of sorts? You know, things like that. So that's where higher potential for learning comes in. We are pushing for that. So the Grapho game, which I know you're going to talk about mm -hmm. in a few minutes, is our version of our drop in the bucket, you know, to create the tsunami of change. That this is what is so, we're doing. This is so beautiful because... You, many times one wouldn't necessarily correlate a game with mental health in that particular context mm -hmm. that you just gave to us. But let's go back to, the, again, the conversation bec between literacy, literacy and mental That's, health because mm -hmm. it is so important yes. and it's not something that we focus on. What strategies could you suggest that we can use to link mental health and literacy together and raise awareness throughout oh. the nation? Great. One thing is we do many uh, community-based programs or school-based programs or church-based yes. programs that we may do. Within those programs, we'll find that many people would link only one focus. They might be like, yes, you need to be aware that if you're sad, this is where you go. You know, here are the resources. They may give us, you know, um, organizations like the Dyslexia Organization, TTAP Organization. We just sometimes would give that information. But many people don't share on how this can be mm -hmm. utilized. Or if they hand out the flyers and, and things like that and pamphlets, 
many individuals don't understand sometimes the words that are in those mm -hmm. pamphlets. So no one asks those questions. They don't do the assessments, the screenings, the pre-screenings where they're able to identify. So when we do these community-based programs, there should be several individuals who are competent in different areas, several individuals that are coming along. And you know, I recognize many of my colleagues are going to be like, yes, but we can't afford that. Right. Yes, I get that. Many of the, those cases, we can't afford that. But um, many of the things that I do in Trinidad and Tobago are pro bono. Mm -hmm. And you know what, we have to start somewhere. You know, I can't do all of that by myself. Right. If I give up six weeks out of the year to go to different islands within the Caribbean to do different things, mm -hmm. then, you know, maybe one of those times a colleague could come for two days out of that time. Mm -hmm. It isn't, it does not affect us so greatly, you know, as far as our bottom line is mm -hmm. concerned. You know, you, I'm not saying that you rob Peter to pay Paul, but yeah. I am saying that you recognize from where you came from, who took a Paul and actually gave you the time of day at that moment to allow you a foot in the door or to be like, wow, I see you're struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, your glasses are all taped up and it looks like you haven't had an eye exam in a while. You know, maybe I should take you down the road to go get one. I will cover it this time. And all I ask is next time you see somebody that needs something, mm -hmm. please pay it forward. And yeah. that's the only thing that I'm asking. So that's what we push at Higher Potential for Learning. I go into schools and I do free workshops for parents. Mm -hmm. I have no issues coming into schools mm -hmm. and working with the principals, with the Ministry of, he of Health or the Ministry of Education to do some training programs because not every teacher knows what to look out for if a child is depressed or if the child can't read or do their math. So whatever the case may be you know, or a child is anxious or depressed. Yeah. You know, they don't know. No, they don't know. For. And there's definitely, I mean, just seeing it in our schools as well, there is a high level of that. And many times children are looking for somebody to talk mm. to and may not even feel comfortable speaking to their teacher, let's be no. frank about it, or even yes. the on-site counselor Most and go externally. So it's great that um, you offer these services, mm. but also the fact that you are keen on pushing the agenda of literacy is linked to this. Yes. And this is something that we need to pay more attention right. to. Now, we've been, you've been speaking a lot about community and it yes. very much resonates with me of that um, phrase it takes a village because yes. that's exactly what it is and now let's move to your app yes. well your game well, rather the, the game I should that we say. brought yes. um, because as we speak about how those who are perhaps in less privileged communities mm -hmm. can access this mm -hmm. this is the first step yes. in bringing literacy to all communities exactly. so tell us a little bit about this game which is 25 years yes, in the making 25 years in the making in finland and i don't know if any of you know finland has one of the highest levels within literacy and i mean we may follow pisa pisa which is an assessment mm -hmm. that they do within countries to see where we are as as far as our academics and our education system is concerned. So we won't get into the um, statistics of that because that might get some people a little bit perturbed. So we will leave that one mm -hmm. alone for now. But within this game, it is for early literacy is what it's pushing. Mm -hmm. So if individuals have a reading deficit, possibly they may have dyslexia. Mm -hmm. This game helps people to be able to recognize what letters are, what the sounds are, string those sounds together to create words right. and it meets the child where they are okay. child or adult and I'm saying it reaches from four plus mm -hmm. right and I say four plus mainly because we have many adults that are not able to read that may be dyslexic and have mm. never been evaluated or assessed and they have done a great job of masking for yes. so many years and you know making different excuses oh I don't have my glasses oh read that naughty words are so tiny you know they'll, they'll throw all these little things in there so this game is something they're able to do privately. They're able to download it for free. Mm -hmm. My practice has paid for this for Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. They can download the British English version specifically, not the American version, mm -hmm. the British English version. They're able to download it for free. They can, once they only need internet to download the game, and after that they can play it offline. So if parents are able to opt in, then we are able to track and see how many children have 
have downloaded the game or parents have downloaded the game and how the child is progressing. So there is like a little checkbox that says, do you want to opt in for us to be able to follow mm -hmm. your progress? And if not, then we just will be able to see how many people downloaded it. So since I've launched this in Trinidad, I launched it in early February. And since I've launched it, only 2,000 people have downloaded the game. Right. And, and it's free. <laughs> Our favorite thing. <laughs> Free, okay? So please recognize that it is something that is going to be helpful for adults as well mm -hmm. as for children. And especially now in our bilingual community, yes. if individuals wish to learn from Venezuela or whatever other country that you come from, want to learn English, this is another way. And you could do it privately without being embarrassed or, you know, feeling a hoe, as they would say, if somebody sees a play in this little child game, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Thing. So yeah. So one of the things I also saw when I was just going through the press release for this mm -hmm. is that it's not just about um, building tools for literacy. It's mm -hmm. also emotional support. Yes. Can you is. share with us a little bit about yes. that? Yes. So if you have ever been around specifically a child or an adult who has had deficits in academics. Mm -hmm. They feel, especially reading, they feel extremely isolated. Mm -hmm. They have low self-esteem. There's no confidence. They're afraid to speak out mm -hmm. in any public setting. You know, most people will be like, oh, that's how he is, man. He's just quiet. They'll make excuses yes. for that individual. But that person does not grow. There isn't any emotional growth for that individual. That individual kind of restricts themselves into the different things that they may do. Mm -hmm. And we will find in that person there are higher chances of depression, higher chances of anxiety, um, higher cases where that individual is leaning towards maybe drugs or alcohol or other different um, fetishes that we may not want to mention on television that are inappropriate mm -hmm. for that person to be part of. And because they're not able to access the resources of here is a text that is teaching you the coping strategies of how to deal with your anxiety at this moment. Here are signs that people post in offices and things that say, pause. Yeah. Take a deep breath, you know? Ground yourself. Put your feet on the ground. Recognize the colors in the room. Recognize the individuals in the room. Count back from 10. Belly breathe. All the, I mean, mm -hmm. these things are placed in different, but if you have deficits in certain areas like reading, you can't even access a sign right. on the wall yeah. to be able to see there is a tip, there is something I could have used at that moment when I was feeling overwhelmed, when I was feeling as though the room was closing in and my chest was being crushed in by the pressure of so much emotion. And even and adults are feeling this. Can you imagine a child who doesn't even have the language or understand what that is when somebody says, why are you so hyper? Why are you sitting into in the corner in full isolation? What, what is isolation again? You know, yeah, you know those, those kinds sorts of, of things. things. So it's like, you know, we want to ensure that we're listening, you know, that when you actually ask somebody, how was your day today? Mm -hmm. Please pause and wait for them to respond. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just be like, oh yeah, my but, but you just ask me, how was my day today? You didn't even wait for me to answer. You know, things like that. You know what I mean? So that's that's what we push for. That is where my practice is, is trying to encourage. So through something like the Grapho game, when we come in mm -hmm. and actually teach parents how to use it or train teachers how to utilize it, mm -hmm. then we are also increasing the awareness of the reasons why it needs to be utilized. So we are putting together the push for increasing literacy along with raising the awareness about mental health and how we're able to take care of ourselves better and pay attention to the people around us. Yeah, I love the fact that you ended it with pay attention to the people around us because sometimes being present can be one of the biggest challenges in such a fast-paced world. Dr. Clay, before we end this conversation this morning, where can we get more information about Grapho and your my practice. Your practice. Yes. There we go. So higherpotentialforlearning.com is my website, and the name of my practice is Higher Potential for Learning. My telephone number on WhatsApp is 702 528 
1276. The link for the Graffo Gang is on the website as well. And I am in Kuva, Three Carlos Street in Kuva, right behind Holy Faith Convent. Convent girl. Oh, yes. <laughs> you're wonderful. Yes. Dr. Clay, thank you so much for being with us this thank morning. You. And thank you for your incredible work that you continue thank to you. do. We thank look you. forward to seeing you continue to grow. And hopefully we'll have you on the show again soon. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's Namaste. been a pleasure. Talking about the Graffo Game app and so much more. Dr. Clay with us in studio. Stay tuned. There's more coming up right after this break. Hey.